हेलो So hey everyone, and in this video, we are gonna talk about the usage of CloudFront in AWS. So basically, uh, in the last video, we covered the first usage that is connection with EC2, and we were able to do that. Let me just show you. Uh, I'll just go to AWS website. And I'll just go to CloudFront. And we basically set up the two distribution, one distribution for S3, which we have to uh, fix today. Okay, in the last video, we were getting a small issue. I'll explain that what was the issue. And uh, this was the EC2 instance, which I'm talking about. This was working, right? So if I go inside this and uh, you would basically see that we get a domain name. So if I just go inside this domain name, you would get an HTTPS domain name. That's the benefit of this one. You can see you get a HTTPS domain name. So you can use it with anything. Okay, right? So you can see that, yeah, I am getting, I am Virajan, right? Perfect. So it works perfectly. And uh, this was the EC2 instance result, right? This was the EC2 instance result. That means I'm able to get things here. Uh, what I can do is I can just go to my EC2 instance uh, yeah wait 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 before that I, I have to tell something in the last video guys in the last few seconds we were having one issue what was the issue the issue was you can see that we hosted our uh, cloud front into this s3 s3 bucket right and we were trying to get things right if i just show you from here you can see this is this is the cloud front distribution and it is hosted it is it is containing the s3 bucket it is hosting the s3 bucket okay so if i go inside this if I go inside this, uh, you would get something like this. Okay, you would get this URL. Okay, and it's the same URL which I've typed here. And I type the image name. Why am I not able to get this? Because the key name is incorrect. In the last video, I was getting the error. This same error was there. Okay, because I have provided incorrect key name. Okay, let me explain that. So I'll just go to S3. And this is a very small mistake and uh, like general mistake which i always do so let me just show you so you can see that this was the s3 bucket okay which i was hosting here you can see that it's just my img1 okay there is no uh, nothing else written apart from this that means i have to pass the key name okay i don't need to write dot png okay so here if i just hit enter you can see guys that i'm able to see the image that means if i just share this link this is not the s3 bucket this is cloud front url if I share this URL and when someone tries to type the image, they are visiting my cloud front and the cloud front is visiting the S3. So that means no one has directly gotten the access of my S3 bucket. My S3 bucket was also private. If I just show you the permission of this bucket, okay, I am viewing this image by the way. Okay, I am viewing this image. Let me just show you this image. You can see that if I try to view this image directly, it's not visible because this is a private bucket. But if I viewed it from my cloud front, it's visible because I have bypassed some things. Okay, so that is the benefit of cloud front. Without actually uh, highlighting your S3 bucket location, you can actually view the images very easily. Okay, so that's why people use cloud front for this case, right? So I hope one doubt is cleared that how S3 would be working here. Let me just clarify one more thing that you can see that inside this we have files folder. So what I'll do is inside this, I'm just gonna write files. Inside this, you can view any other image. So you can see that inside this, our key name is herschel.png so in the end it's written.png it's it has .png that's why we have to write .png okay that means whatever is the key name you have to write that key name okay so you can see that I, yeah this is me okay so you can see that now it's working perfectly so we hosted ec2 instance okay we hosted ec2 instance you can just see that this was the ec2 instance right we also hosted our s3 bucket into cloudfront okay that means both are hosted but now one problem is one problem is what you have to host it together that means uh, like uh, what i would do is what i want is something like if i type if i type slash api slash uh, whatever api name suppose login API name, this must go to this must go to ec2 instance and if i write slash uh, files slash herschel.png that means it, it's going to s3 bucket okay so now i would be deciding routes okay i would be deciding routes how can i do that so for that i have to create a fresh uh 
cloud distribution cloud front distribution so i'll just go to my cloud front distributions uh oh yeah uh, yeah this was the page so i'll just go back to distributions and here guys we can create a new distribution okay so our main goal is to have ec2 and s3 connected to a single domain name of cloud front okay right now we have things differently you can see this is uh, distribution one this is distribution two they are separate what i want is i want one single url i want one single domain name which is going to show both s3 result also ec2 instance result also that means i want to show my images and videos also and i want to show my backend apis also both in the same url both in the same domain name okay so for that i'm creating a distribution cloud fund distribution so here guys what you need to do is you just need to choose a domain name okay so first of all i'll be choosing this uh, uh domain name of my easy to instance suppose so for that guys what you need to do is i'll just uh, type ec2 okay just type ec2 and whatever ec2 instance you want to show you can show it here uh uh, guys, one thing which I would like to do is um, I would simply create one directory also. Okay, so this was my EC2 instance which is connected to this specific distribution, old distribution, right? I'm going to do one thing first. So here I would just click on connect. Okay, right now it's showing me as default index.html. Okay, so let me just uh, create some routes. Okay, so if I click on connect and uh, here. Here, if I just go to if, if I just become root user sudo flag i okay and if I type ls you can see that we are here so if I write cd dot dot ls you can see we are here cd slash where we are inside where ls so you can see inside where we have to go inside www folder okay so cd slash www folder uh, yes so okay i think i have to write it directly cd cd www okay yes now we are inside the www folder if i type ls you can see that we have the L, uh, html directory so if i write cd slash html uh, okay again i have to write it normally yes uh, okay now we are inside html i'm sorry now we are inside the html perfect so now guys what we need to do is we need to do simply check ls so you can see that we have index.html which is containing what text it's containing i am viraj n okay here itself i'm gonna create one directory so if i write mkdir mkdir and i'll just create a directory named as api okay api so if i type ls you can see we have a directory named as api so if i see cd slash api so uh cd api so you can see that right now we are inside api okay so right now it's empty if i type ls it's empty so inside the api directory we can show something so here if i suppose create one file named as index.html um sorry v index dot html okay v index dot html and it would just open the index dot html file just press i and now you can insert things okay so i would just write h1 tag and i would just close this h1 tag right and here i can just write hey there this is api1 okay you can create proper api route but right now i'm just creating html files so hey there this is api1 and then if i press escape then you just need to press colon then w right and quit okay so now i've created this file let's check it here if i get it or not so if i write slash api slash um uh, index dot html do i get this right now i'm not able to get this because yeah we have to set up the routes but anyways so here you can see that i have modified my file okay i have modified my file everything is fine here but yeah we have to create a, a cloud distribution which actually shows this kind of files okay how can i do that so for that i'll just go to cloudfront okay i'll just create a new distribution so you can just go to cloudfront these are my old distribution you can skip these for now okay these are one one of them is containing s3 bucket in the last video we discussed about this one and the last video also discussed about this one also this was containing a single ec2 instance right now i'm creating a new distribution and here i, I need to write the domain name so i'll just go to this instance and uh, basically this is the 
domain name okay dns so you can see this is the domain name i need to pass this specific domain name okay so now i'll just go to my cloud front and i'll just paste this so you can see that yeah this is it you have to write it this way don't write http etc just make it this way okay now after this guys uh we simply need to just enable a few settings here Let me just check what are the exact settings, then we can continue. Okay, that it's HTTP only. After that, guys, what you need to do is you need to simply click on some policy. So here, uh, I, I would just keep this one empty for now. And then here you can just go down you can just go down and uh, you need to select the policy okay so here in the last video i think we had some kind of policy cache policy yeah we created this policy i'm gonna select the same policy okay or you can create a fresh policy and just watch my last video and understand it now after this once you select the policy you need to simply say uh you need to simply provide the default root object if you want it's optional okay here you can just go down do not enable security uh what else what else uh yeah default root object okay so here you can just provide the root object that means whatever the root file so default i want to provide this file suppose in this case so i want to provide this file right that's fine and guys after this you can simply create the distribution perfect so now guys i have created a distribution i have created a, a cloud front distribution it's gonna take a few minutes to deploy you can see that right now it's showing me deploying what i can do is till then yeah this one just now we created this one it's deploying okay for till then what we can do is it's gonna take a few minutes so i'll just go to origins you can see one origin has been added one origin which is easy to install now we have to add a s3 bucket also to the same cloud front okay that's what we want so for that guys what we'll do is we'll simply say that uh, create origin and here we can just choose the bucket my cloud front bucket right and after that you can again give some kind of path if you want here but right now i'm not giving the path right now i'm just keeping it as it is okay and guys after that uh, i'll just give origin okay just a second i'll just give origin access control settings and here i'll just select the settings which i created in the last one okay and after that guys uh everything is done here yeah i think i need to modify my policy so if i just click on click on copy policy okay i'll just click on copy policy and then i would just go to bucket permissions i think i need to modify this one so if i click on edit right so you can see that yeah it's done it's done perfect so now if i click on save changes you can see that i have modified the policy so now this bucket is accessed by the instance you can sorry by the cloud front you can see this specific cloud front you can see i did this one or else you can create a new statement also in the second object you can provide things that's also fine but right now i'm keeping it one single policy for only for one cloud front okay that means now the cloud front won't be working here it would be the new cloud front created okay so now uh, this is the new distribution here we have just given the permissions modified the permissions and uh, additional settings okay i think everything is fine okay everything is fine here now if i just click on create origin it would be done so guys you can see that now i have created the origin now you can see that in origins we have an ec2 instance as well as an s3 bucket uh, yeah we have both the things let me just check the UK, UK. so you can see that right now the status is deploying it's gonna take a few seconds few minutes to deploy okay so let's wait for this one and after that this url would start working but for what uh, routes so we're going to create some routes also so in the behaviors you can see that by default you're going to show the easy to instance you are showing the easy to instance but what i want is i want to show something else also
I'll just click on create behavior. Okay, here we can create behavior on which specific path what you want. Okay, so I'll just say that suppose if someone visits slash uh, API path slash star that means if someone visits this path okay if someone visits this path then what you want you want to show the ec2 instance okay if someone types this path then i want to show the ec2 instance stuff okay then after that i can just uh, say that everything is fine 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 and now i can just create this behavior okay you can see that for ec2 instance we created one route slash api okay and it's gonna take again a few seconds to create this one okay guys just wait for a few minutes like it generally takes time so we can't do anything we have to wait <laughs> now i think it would work properly so you can see that this is the distribution and in the behaviors we added one behavior okay in general you can see that it's still deploying okay because we made one more change okay so now again if i click on create origin now this time i'm gonna add my bucket okay i'm gonna add my bucket now i'm doing this for my bucket okay so origin path okay i'm sorry sorry we are we don't need to create origin i'm sorry we need to create the behavior i'm sorry okay yeah inside behaviors create behavior and here just write the pattern so slash suppose uh, someone visits the files folder of my s3 bucket so i'm gonna write it that way slash files okay fine to which one to the s3 bucket okay now after that what you need to do is i think rest everything is same just click on create behavior yes you can see that now guys we have created one more behavior this is for the s3 bucket okay so we would have to wait for a few minutes because it's still deploying let's see in the uh, general part you can see that it's still deploying we have to wait and uh, we'll wait for a few more minutes because we just made a change so that's why it's showing deploying and we connected both s3 and ec2 instance okay so let's wait for a few minutes and then we'll continue back
okay guys so now you can see that it's done our url is available so if i just visit this url directly can see that it's showing me index.html if i write slash uh, suppose files slash herschel dot png so you can see that it's working for both cases it's working for my ec2 instance also it's working for my s3 bucket also now i created one route for ec2 instances also like slash api slash index dot ht ml so you can see that yeah we had the api folder cre we created the api folder right inside that we modified the index.html so you can see this is the modified index.html which is available inside the api folder right so we can create one more file so let me just go to our ec2 instance here let's try to create one more file okay so i'll just go to instance and inside this i'll just click on connect and connect and here we can simply go to api route okay so if i just first of all become root user sudo flag i okay and now if i type uh, cd dot dot okay so if i write cd slash where slash www slash html if i type ls you can see we have index.html so if i write cd api folder if I type ls, you can see we have index.html, right? This this specific this specific file contains what text? So we created this today only. It contains this text, right? Similarly, we can create the second file. So if I am going to create second file, I can just create v login.html suppose login. I'm just creating HTML files, but yeah, you can use your normal Node.js backend or any other type of backend to show API responses like this one. It would work properly. Okay, there's no issue. So here, guys, what we're gonna do is we are going to say that uh, if I just press I, okay, and just press I, and after that, what you need to do is you need to simply write something. Okay, so I'll just write. Uh, h1 tag another h1 tag okay i'm just creating api like this obviously you would be having node.js apis or any other backend apis so you'll just write uh, this is login api response okay login api response then if i press escape then if i press colon then if i press wq so save and quit now guys if i first load this you can see now if i just type login dot html so you can see that this is login api response that means it's working perfectly our cloudfront is having this ec2 instance as well as it is having our s3 bucket also you can see we are able to get the image also which is available inside my s3 bucket perfect so now it's working perfectly now guys what you need to do is you can just go to your cloudfront okay just go to your cloudfront cloud front okay and inside this we simply have to just go to this distribution and here we have error pages so we can actually create some custom error pages if we want uh, you can just say that 404 not found page must be here and custom error response uh, instead of receiving yes uh, you want to send a custom error response so here which Here you need to specify the custom error page path. Okay, so here you can specify whatever is the path of your custom error page. Uh, let me just uh, create a custom error file. Just a minute, guys. um i'll just i'll just go to my s3 bucket okay and there i'll just create one custom path so i'll just type s3 here let me just create one custom path okay 
inside this uh, because in s3 generally you have static files right so my cloud front uh, bucket inside this i'll just go to files and here we can just uh, upload one file what file error.html file so for that i'm just gonna create my error.html file somewhere so uh, i think i have already created it somewhere let me just find it okay Anyways, I'll just create one new file here. So first, let's create one folder. Inside this, I'm going to create a custom file in VS Code. Okay. In VS Code. So, I'll just open VS Code. And here, I'll just type index whatever is the error. So, error.html file, suppose. Error404.html. Okay. Inside this, I'm just going to say that... Uh, this is custom error page by hj okay something like that if i just save this now guys uh, we simply need to drag and drop this one so i'll just drag and drop the file here directly here file here okay and now after this we can simply click on upload okay so upload so i've uploaded a file to my s3 bucket which is error file okay so you can see this is the error file okay so here suppose if i uh, if i just simply try try to write files slash e r r o r uh, it's error dot html right error 404 dot html error 404 dot html so you can see that yeah we are able to get the page we have to show this page okay we have to show this page so i'll just copy this path copy this path and here i can just say this is the response path which you need to show right so you have uploaded this file and you just need to show this file in 404 not found i'm showing this file path right i'm showing this path so just write uh, it as it is whatever is the path okay and what is the response code so you can just pick whatever response code for that specific response code you're gonna get this error so create custom error response now let's try to get this one okay so guys now you can see that this is done basically and now simply you can just uh, you can just uh, go to general you can see it's still deploying let's wait for a few seconds because it's going to update things then we can uh, check if the error page is shown or not okay let's wait for a few more few more minutes Oh, you guys, now you can see that it's deployed, it's updated. Okay, Ankita Dixit, hello, hello, Ankita. Now, after this, let's check this one again. Okay. So, you can see that this is the normal page. Here, we were showing, suppose, some kind of uh, file okay so files slash suppose if i write herschel.png this will show my image but suppose now if i write herschel1.png um okay it's again showing this kind of thing okay let's try to write the route slash login.html okay it's working and if i write login1.html yes okay so yeah for this one you can see that we got the error page okay so for all the like uh, ec2 instances you will get this kind of error page okay perfect so guys i hope you understood what is the purpose of cloud usage we simply did it for first of all in the last video we did it for ec2 then we did it for 
S3. Then today we merged both of that to a single CloudFront URL and we also created the custom error page, right? So I hope you guys understood this session and obviously you would be using it in most cases where you need to convert HTTP to HTTPS very easily and when you need to merge your EC2 instance and S3 bucket together to a single URL when you need to bind things together, you're going to use CloudFront for that. Okay, so that's it for today. I will see you in the next one. In the next video, we're going to talk about the next topics which are okay let me just explain what are the next topics and then we can wrap up the whole series okay so we're going to talk about amazon vpc virtual private cloud okay very important and then we're going to talk about route 53 okay these are very important concepts we're going to talk about those and after that we can just uh, talk about some extra topics which i haven't covered and which you have demanded in the comment section okay so please ask for topics in the comment section which you want and i'll be completing that if you want to get the whole playlist you can just go to geeks for geeks development channel there you would find the whole playlist okay so that's it for today i will see you in the next one till then have a good day and bye bye when is the next session tomorrow tomorrow is the next session